Hello viewers, I'm Richard Southwell and I am obsessed with networks. So, what am I holding in my hand? I'm holding none other than a complex network. So it's a funny looking object. You see how big it is? You see what it's made out of? Well, today I'm going to tell you the story of how this network came to be as it is. Our story begins in January 2013 in Hong Kong and at that time I was looking at my computer and I was looking at, can you guess? Yeah, that's right, I was looking at networks as I spend a long time doing. I mean, you can find out about my network obsessions by just watching some of my other videos like Complex Network from Simple Rules. Anyway, so there I was looking at my networks and suddenly I had a flash of insight and I thought to myself oh my god what about if I actually make one of these networks into a real object that I can see and touch and so I had a look through many of my different rules and I decided upon one that I wanted to see so I settled upon these rules here now you can see in the other videos exactly what this means Basically, these are just the rules that say how this writer is going to move and what kinds of structural changes are going to happen. So, the way this thing works, right, it's really simple. Don't get, you know, don't get worried. It's simple as anything. Basically, we just get this network here, this cube, and then we just keep making these rules happen again and again and again. And something quite magical is going to happen. Okay, so now I'm actually going to show you this system evolving. So, do you see it running through time? This writer is going to move, and as it does, it's altering the network. Do you see? We started with such a simple little cube, but as this writer's moving around, it's making the thing more and more complicated. Well, I set up a special rule, so that as the system grows, these vertices are going to sort of organize themselves slowly into a shape which looks pretty good but all that really matters for the dynamics here is just the way that all of these dots and lines are connected together see this is one thing I love about this kind of subject basically the underlying features are about as simple as you can get it's just to do with how stuff's connected together and how stuff moves by simple rules but anyway can you see now, what began as a small initial cube is now blossoming into this intricate object and as time rolls on it's just getting more and more complicated now this writer shifting around at the bottom it keeps weaving in and out and making this complicated thing form and now the writer's moving, oh no it's going back to the bottom and there it goes up to the top again now it's going to start weaving some complexity up there making some kind of amazing structure as it goes. The dynamics produced by something like this seem incredibly hard to predict but I think that there's a certain kind of beauty about it. Look at this! This is actually a three-dimensional version of that network. You see, we can spin it around, we can zoom in, we can flip it over, we can do all of these different things to get more kind of idea about what sort of shape this network actually has. So let's just have a look in here. We see this part here, it's like a triangular piece. It has these two bits going along and a bit up there which connects to another triangle piece. And you see all these parts here, they form a kind of bridge which joins this part to that. So it's almost like a handle. And if we spin it round we see that this handle comes together with this handle and that forms part of a giant cycle all the way around here you can zoom out to get more perspective and so by looking at this kind of thing you can start to understand this network in all kinds of different ways and this is because this network is I mean it's pretty small but actually it's really so complicated that Looking at it from many different angles through three-dimensional space is really a, a much better way to 
try and get a handle on it. But you know what? This just makes me hungry. It makes me hungry for some three-dimensional printing. So, I went on Google, and what did I find? I found a little something called Ponoco. Now, I don't want this to look like an advertising video. There might be better 3D printing people out there. I've no idea, but I use these guys. And I tell you what, it was pretty simple. Because I've got a philosophy at the moment. If you don't have time to do it right, just get it done. So that's exactly what I did with this project here. I couldn't be bothered to spend more than four hours on the entire project. I spent about two hours choosing the network, learning how to generate the appropriate kind of file. I spent about another hour messing around on here, and another hour uploading the file onto Pinoco. And that's all I did. And then I waited for, for about two months, for about one month. And then I waited for about one month. And what happened? Bingo! I got my network in the post. And it looked quite a lot like this. But you know what? When I was looking at that network on time step 200, as well as the question of what happened when I'd make the real 3D object, there was something else I was wondering about. I thought to myself, if this is what this thing looks like, on time step 200, then what would it look like on time step 3000? And so, I set my computer whirling, I waited patiently, and I like exam. I got this picture here. So this is a three-dimensional um, depiction of the network you get after iterating it for 3000 time steps under that rule. And look at this lovely beauty. Now it's kind of hard to see because there's just so much detail here. Let's give it a spin round to get some idea of the global structure. You see we've got these, how many do you think? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven or eight of these sort of clusters on the end. So let's just zoom in on one of them. Let's have a look at the intricate details. Shift it over to the left. Let's zoom in on this. So you see that even just this little bit on the left, this is probably even more complicated than that 200 vertex thing that we just looked at. Look at all the detail here, all the triangles and different pieces. And this is just one little bit of this great big lovely network here. So you can imagine just how amazingly complicated this shape is going to get. I mean, this is what it looks like on time step 3000. I've devolved this thing up to time step 10,000, and I can tell you that the behavior up until time step 10,000 is just constantly seemingly complicated. What happens if you evolve it for 100,000 time steps? What about a million? Well, it's certainly possible and quite probable that this thing's just going to carry on getting more and more and more complicated. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that an infinite sea of great complexity is evolving from this tiny seed. I mean, we think of the idea of an oak tree growing from a little seed as something amazing. But what we're seeing here is that really, that's just the kind of thing that happens all the time in the mathematical universe. Could it be that our entire universe grows from some tiny structure through simple rules just like this? I think it probably could. Well, I'm not saying that this is the exact model of a universe right here. I mean, that would be ridiculous. But, hey, why not? It could be this. It could be something very similar. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, this is just how stuff is. Amazing complexity, outstanding beauty, from tiny, tiny, simple rules. So that's the end of the story, folks. This beautiful three-dimensional image took all of that work. And 
There's never been another object created which is like this. And nobody designed it. It's just the kind of thing that simple programs can make.